This is the Guru Gear Kaboko City Commuter. It's an 18 liter bag that's designed for the urban minded photographer with space for both camera gear and everyday essentials. Guru Gear is a relatively new player on the camera gear market. And I thought I would jump into this bag to give you a demo of what their products are like and some of the unique features that they include in their bags. In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the things that I like about the bag after having had time to test it. I'm also gonna share with you some of the things that I personally look for when choosing a camera bag and go through some of the things that might be deal breakers if you're thinking about picking one of these up. Full disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video and Guru Gear did not ask me to make this review. They did, however, provide me with their bag to test and made available a link to their Kickstarter down below if you wanna gain access to their early bird pricing. After September 22nd, if you're interested in picking up this bag, I'll change out the link so that will take you directly to their website if you're interested in picking one up. Now into the review. So who is this bag for? Personally, I feel like this is for the person who is a photographer, but wants to carry more than just their camera gear and wants a camera bag that doesn't look like a camera bag. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat is it has this split front design. So rather than having one big front panel, it actually has these two compartments that make it a little bit easier to access. And that's a typical design feature that you see on all the bags that they design. This is an 18 liter bag, which tends to be the perfect amount for an everyday or an overnight bag. Up until now, the bag I've been using every day is this Shimoda X Action X30 bag. And I like it for two reasons. The first being that it has a flexible design where the top has space just to stash whatever you want in it. It's the exact same general layout as the city commuter in that you can unbuckle the top and you can just shove regular everyday items, clothing, whatever you want in the top, but then the main compartment has the ability to throw camera gear in it. You can also use the top in the city commuter for camera gear because it's padded, unlike the Shimoda where you have to purchase additional accessories if you want an insert to make sure that your camera doesn't get banged up. Another thing I look for when choosing my camera bag is the ability to expand. And in this case, both the Shimoda and the City Commuter have this feature where the roll top unfolds and you can kind of overstuff or overload it in a pinch if you so happen to have a few extra items that you need to carry. Also, this doesn't look like your traditional camera bag. When we think of a typical camera bag, you probably think of something like the Low Pro Pro Tactic series with the webbing and the black design. And those are so obviously camera bags that you could be standing in a crowd and anyone could immediately pick out that you've got camera gear in your bag. The nice thing about the City Commuter is that it is a lot more low profile. Now, you could say the same thing about a Peak Design bag, but the problem with Peak Design is that they are becoming very ubiquitous in terms terms of being a very popular camera bag. So I've touched a little bit on the exterior, but let's go into more details. You notice again that we have this split front design. And the thing that's great about it is that you can access top to bottom everything in a quick glance. And not only that, there is a ton of organization. One thing that makes bags super handy is when they go ahead and add all these extra zippers and these mesh pockets, because you don't have to think about adding organization or adding extra extra things like, like in my case, I have these gear pouches that I made that I tend to throw in all my bags because I just have everything in there. You don't need these. You can just throw whatever you have inside of these zipper pockets and you're good to go. Compared to a lot of the bags I use, the straps on this bag are excellent. They're super padded and also notice they're not the porous mesh that you get on the back panel. So there is, I've had problems with bags in the past where this material, as you're rubbing it, against jackets, against zippers, against things that are on your front will start to wear away. And I don't like when that mesh material is on the straps. I wanna show you something really cool about this bag. You've probably noticed that the material is not your usual camera bag material. It actually uses two of my favorite materials. It uses this X-Pax VX21, which is this really lightweight, laminated, waterproof material. Most camera bags use what is known as Cordura, and this is 500D Cordura. Now, this is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. That's because 
The back of it also has a lamination, but the problem with Cordura is that over time, it tends to get more dirt and grime in it, which removes the water resistance of that material. Now, the interior of this bag uses what's called a Hyper D ripstop material. Now, most ripstop is that gridded nylon that you see, but this is kind of like an ultra weight diamond ripstop nylon. Super cool and super unique. So maybe you're wondering, Anthony, why are you talking about these materials? And that's because one of my secret hobbies is actually sewing. About three years ago, I made a bag or this waste pouch for myself that uses the exact same material. You can see that the outside of it uses the same X-Pax VX21 material and that on the inside, I also used the same Hyper D material, but in a fluorescent orange. On the topic of material, the X-Pax VX21 weighs about six ounces per yard squared. Compare that to regular Cordura, like what Low Pro and other manufacturers use, it weighs around 11 ounces per yard. I tested the weight of this bag with the dividers installed in the configuration I'm showing, and it came in at around three and a half pounds. Compare that to the Peak Design Everyday bag, that comes in at around 4.43 pounds. Some of the clever things that I like about the design of this bag are that they integrated a lot of use of magnets, which I find really cool. You might notice on the top of this bag, they're using these fid lock I don't know how to explain this to you other than to say if you've ever gone skiing and worn a ski helmet It's that magnet kind of like click latch that you get and then to undo it you, you slide them So you don't you don't even need to really buckle them up. They kind of just Magnetize together, which is super cool. It took a little bit of getting used to because they've used them on the top and they've used them on the sternum strap. So there's a little bit of a different technique. Instead of just pulling it apart like a regular buckle, you do have to slide it up. Also, the water bottle holder on the side is magnetic. So if you wanna use it, you can open it up. And when you're not using it, it just clicks back into place. But also, we wanna make sure that we can fit a Nalgene in here. And... It just fits. It's almost like they knew people were gonna use Nalgene bottles. I hate it when you get a backpack and you can't fit a full-size Nalgene in it. Now, a few things that you might wanna pay attention to if you're seriously considering this bag. The first is that while I do like the roll top design, I do find it could be one or two rolls longer. One of the things you'll notice on the Shimoda bag that I showed is that the roll top, first of all, it uses a buckle, which is more like what you would get on a dry sack. I actually prefer the single buckle because it's a little bit faster to get into and there's not so many straps to manage. But what you'll notice is that it rolls up and there's just a ton of flexibility for adding way more content to your pack. You only re need to roll it once or twice and then you know all that extra space, you could just stuff as much stuff as you want. Versus the city commuter, I find it a little bit tricky if you wanna really overstuff it because you don't have as tall of a neck or as tall as a collar. Although you can see again, they've used magnets to allow the top to seal. That being said, because there are two straps on the top, if you ever wanted to, you could shove extra content under those straps. Now, if you're talking about loading up a tripod, you'll notice that there are a few options. One, you can use the water bottle holder and they have the side Velcro buckle here that you can use to secure it. But if you go for their Pro Bundle, it comes with a few extras, including these tripod straps, as well as a waistband. Personally, for an 18 liter bag, I don't feel like you need that waistband. Even on my 30 liter Shimoda bag, I've taken off the waistband, unless I'm doing something where there is just a ton of weight in my bag. That being said, if you are someone who likes to attach things to your waistband, the one that comes with the city commuter has one inch webbing, so you could attach lanyards or carabiners or extra pouches for extra gear. Also, I mentioned that X-Pax is a waterproof material, but they do include a rain cover if you end up going with the Pro Bundle. Another thing that might be a deal breaker are the dividers. Now, most brands have switched to a full Velcro divider, meaning that you can stick the dividers at any point in the divider. Whereas with the ones that come with the city commuter, they've sewn on patches of hook and loop. 
so that you can't necessarily attach them any way you want. Like you can see these ones here have no Velcro and then they provide ones that do have Velcro. They do provide you with quite a lot. So I didn't have a problem coming up with a configuration for this bag. There's still a ton of dividers, but it would be nice to see them go with something that is fully Velcroed because then they'd probably be able to cut down on the amount of dividers that they're actually providing in the kit. I'm gonna roll to the backside just to show you the interior one more time because the zipper that's included on here, I believe is a number eight zipper. Now I am personally a fan of huge, chunky, beefy zippers. Like the Shimoda, I think has a number five zipper and the ones that come on the city commuter about an, are about a number eight, which is a little bit of a smaller zipper. And while they're nice and smooth and quick, big zippers can be a little bit more stiff, which I do like because it also means they're harder to break. Smaller zippers, if you put too much tension on them, they can rip over time. Again, if you're using this, know how to handle your own gear, respect your own gear, don't abuse it. On the interior, just cause I didn't touch on it, is a ton of organization. There's a whole bunch of mesh pockets for storing all your accessories. And there's a laptop and a tablet sleeve if that's something you wanna have space for. Just be mindful, it might be a little bit tight if you tried to fit both a laptop and a tablet. I would go with one or the other. If you do both, it might be hard to close the bag. Depending on when you're picking up this bag, there are three different pricing structures that you need to be aware of. When it's fully released and fully available in stores, the bag itself will be sold for $2.99, which puts it in a similar price category as something like the Peak Design Everyday Bag or the Wandered Provoke. Very similar style bags that you might wanna cross compare. Now, if you do decide to pick it up early, the pre-release price is $2.29 and the Kickstarter after the pre-release will be $2.49. And depending on whether or not you go with the regular bundle or the pro bundle, the pro bundle will be an additional price on top of that. Now, if you want to carry even more, you might need to size up to something like a 30 liter bag. And in those types of cases, that's where my Action 30, my Shimoda bag is gonna be my go-to. But that's for when I need to carry more gear. When I need to carry less or I'm just going downtown, something like an 18 or a 20 liter bag fits the bill perfectly. Later this week, I'm gonna be showing some of the behind the scenes that went into filming the footage you saw in this video, as well as the accompanying short and TikTok that just got posted. So if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. I can't punch the screen.